my inner bloke. When I feel like a drag queen in tights and heels, I put that down to my inner bloke. He's the one who always has to win. He comes into his own in seminars and pub debates. He knows a lot of facts and he loves to swap them. There's nothing he won't turn into a joke, including me. He's a bully like that. He needs to be put down. He's a thwarted thug and it's all thanks to me. The body he lives through. My puny little arms and the girly way I kick. From which I've wanted to run Once I cleaned a door That was fouling on the floor Now the wind comes whistling through A gap that wasn't there before A strip of beading I secured With non-returning screws Is I notice slightly proud But there's nothing I can do and I feel like the man who lives on that farm Which sits in the middle of the M62 I thought it would be alright Now I can't sleep at night Some things you cannot undo To be a cul-de-sac And I feel like the man who lives On that farm Which sits in the middle Of the M62 I thought it would be alright Now I can't sleep at night Some things you cannot undo Too late to worry now, I can't turn back the clock At least I can cross the road to get to the corner shop And I feel like the man who lives on that farm Which sits in the middle of the M62 I thought it would be alright, now I can't sleep at night some things you cannot undo Sent as a present from Anam, a red cockatoo, coloured like the peach tree blossom, speaking with the speech of men. And they did to it what is always done to the learned and eloquent. They took a cage with stout bars and shut it up inside. Nay, I prithee, put on this gown and this beard and make him believe that thou art Sir Topaz the curate. Oh. <laughs> Do it quickly, I'll call Sir Toby the while. Well, I'll put it on and I will dissemble myself in it. And I would have were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. <laughs> oh, Jove bless thee, Master Parson. 
to him, sir, Topaz. <laughs> what ho, I say. Peace in this prison. Oh, the knave counterfeits well. A good knave. Who calls there? Sir Topaz, the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio, the lunatic. Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz, go to my lady. Out! Hyperbolical fiend! How vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? <laughs> oh, well said, Master Parson. Sir Topaz, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself with courtesy. Uh, sayest thou this house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Why, it hath bare windows transparent as barricados, and the clerestories towards the south north are as lustrous as ebony, and yet complainest thou of obstruction. I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman, thou errest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. <laughs> Make the trial of it in any constant question. Oh, uh, what? is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wild fowl. <laughs> that the soul of our grandam might haply inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and no way approve of his opinion. Oh, fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness. Shall hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits, and fear to call a woodcock, lest thou dispossess the soul of thy grandam. Oh, fare thee well. Sir, Sir Topaz! Sir Topaz! My most exquisite Sir Topaz. Nay, I am for all waters. Thou mightst have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. Now, to him in thine own voice, and bring me word of how thou findst him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. Oh. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were, for I am now so far in my offence with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Hey Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady oh. does. My lady is Fool. unkind, Purdy. Oh, fool! Alas, why is she so? Oh, fool, I say! She loves another. Who calls her? Good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio! Aye, good fool! <gasps> Alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Fool! There was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? <laughs> then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. <laughs> they have propertied me. Keep me in darkness. Hmm. Send ministers to me. Asses! and do all they can to face me out of my wits. I advise you what you say. The minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavour thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble-babble. Sir Topaz, I... Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who? I, sir? Not I, sir. God by you, good Sir Topaz. Marry, amen. I will, sir, I will. Fool, fool I say! Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? I am shent for speaking to you. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I, I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Oh, well a day that you were, sir. By this hand, I am. Good fool, some ink, paper and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it. But tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. 
I tell thee true. Nay, I'll ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains. <laughs> oh, I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree. I, I prithee, be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir. I'll be with you again in a trice like to the old vice your need to sustain. Who with dagger of black in his rage and his wrath cries, Ah, to the devil, like a map, lap, hairs and nails that have chewed good and devil. My children, I can hear them talking, my children, fluent English and broken Kurdish, and whenever I disagree with them, they will comfort each other by saying, don't worry about mum, she is Kurdish. Will I be the foreigner in my own home? So 